Here's a voicemail from one of our listeners named Maria. I have a girlfriend whose husband is declining, and he's actually dying of cancer. Several years ago, we were at the dinner table, and I brought up Christianity, and I was getting persecuted by him. And now he is in hospice. He declined having a chaplain speak to him. I'm going to go visit them on Sunday. What is your counsel how to bring about the gospel to this dying man who doesn't know Christ? Thank you, and God bless you. Oh, Maria, I'm sorry to hear about this situation. And the first thing I want to do is just pray for this man and pray for you that the Lord would give you uh, the words. Father, we pray for this man um, who has demonstrated in his life um, a hostility toward your truth. We pray, God, that you would soften his heart. We ask that you would draw him to yourself by the power of the Holy Spirit, that he would come to understand the gospel, the forgiveness of sins, the hope that we have in your son Jesus prior to his death, and like the thief on the cross, that he would call upon your name for forgiveness and experience that forgiveness now. Be with him, be with Maria as well, Lord, as she speaks with this family. Give her courage, give her the filling of your Holy Spirit, boldness and wisdom, Lord, to articulate the truth of your gospel to, to this man, to this family. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, the, the first thing I want to do is just read um, the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Beginning in verse 16, he says, From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's what we plead. Um, with people saying, uh, we implore you, be reconciled to God. Why? Because of the goodness of the gospel, because for our sake, he made him to be sin, Jesus, who knew no sin, the sinless son of God, so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God, having had our sins forgiven and, and given as a gift, the righteousness of Jesus Christ credited to our account. Now, with regard to this man, uh, you know, a lot can change in the space of some years. You said, you know, from that time that initially you guys spoke around the dinner table when he was hostile uh, to the gospel, that there's been some time that has elapsed and it sounds like some serious life changes with, with sickness. And the Bible is full of stories of God changing the hard hearts of people. You think of Saul of Tarsus, a persecutor of the church transformed by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the power is in God's word and spirit. It's not in, in you, sister. Um, it's not in, you know, how, how well you can articulate these truths. It's in uh, the word and in the spirit working together with the word in the hearts of people who hear. And so pray for wisdom Pray for an open door, and I would say if you get an opportunity and when you get an opportunity, focus on the glory of the gospel, on the hope that we have, the promise that we have in Jesus of new life, of the forgiveness of sins. And so I, I, I just um, pray for you that the Lord would give you this opportunity and that the Lord would open the heart of this man um, as he, as he um, draws near to death. And so the Lord be with you, Maria. Thank you for calling.